in this video we're going to focus on how we can have here these data labels in here and then as well a total sum at the very top here matching in the color of the borders as you can see here and what is very nice if i refresh you can see here it is walking along or moving along with the bar so let's start to explore how to do this so let's start to look how to add data labels within the bars and a total sum data label on top of the bar in a bar chart in chart.js. So the first thing what we need is of course to have a default code. So for that we can find it on chart.js3.com getting started or this specific link here which you can also find in the description box. Scroll down and then eventually copy this entire chunk of code here. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. So then what I will do is I'll just paste this all in there and once I did that, what I want to do here is move this title within the document here, save that and refresh. All right, so now I have a bar chart, but what I need to have here is a stacked bar chart because every individual bar should have a value or data label. So let's start to do that. So I'm going to just duplicate the data set, copy that, paste that in there. And then what I will say here, this will be the black sales. And then here we have the red sales. So to do this, I need to have, of course, the color. So I'm going to remove every color except for the top, which is the red color. So we'll maintain the red color. And here, exactly the opposite, the bottom, which is a black color. Put it in there. All right. To make sure it is clear, I'm going to renumber them all by a 1 to uh, 7. So that's 5, 6, and 7. So we can easily see the example. If I save this now, refresh. Here right now, it's not yet stacked. So we're going to activate the stack here. So we're going to, on the scales, we will say stacked equals true. And here, stacked equals true, comma. And then make sure here as well, comma, or else you get an error. Save that, refresh. So there we are. So now we have this. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the data labels plugin. To get the data labels plugin, you can go just to CDN js.com and search for the specific plugin which is called the chart.js plugin data labels so i'm going to copy this and then you can click click on this one here to copy the entire uh, code the tag in itself so and then i'm going to scroll up here on top and then i will paste this below the chart.js library why the chart.js library needs to load first because this plugin is basically an add-on for chart.js meaning it has dependencies that needs to be loaded first in the chart.js library and then this will work properly so if i save this it is not done yet let's scroll down here because we need to register or activate the plugin so I put a comma here just within the options as you can see and then i'm going to say here plugins and i'm going to say here chart data labels if i save this refresh there we are it just took a second to load now we have this here is the next challenge is eventually is to put in the value on top here. This is not possible with the plugin data labels or let me explain. You can move this up to the very top. But the problem is when you move this one to the top, there's none within here. So this means we're going to need something else. And what I will do is I'm going to create a custom plugin. We're going to make our own plugin and put in here the total sum here above. So let's start to work on that. So the first thing what we need to do is to add up another plugin. To add up another plugin, we're going to put in here comma, because this is basically an array with an object. And then you're going to say here, well, just for the sake of it, we could say your top labels. That's basically what we want. It's a top label. And then enter, enter. And then in here, we're going to say here, I'll just say, this will be the top label plugin block. And I'm going to say constant top labels equal. I'm going to say your ID will equal to top label. And then what I'm going to say here is the drawing time. So when are we going to draw the top label? Well, in our case, I want to draw that after the data sets has been drawn. So it will be on top here. And then it should be more than sufficient. So we're going to say here, after data sets draw, then we're going to draw this or activate this, this plugin. So then here we're going to have charts. We have your arguments and then plugin options. Although the last two won't be used because these are directly connected with this, we won't be using that at all. No, or at least not in this video. 
So then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use object destructuring because the chart here has multiple objects because these are all objects and we need to have the specific items here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say constant and we're going to say curly braces equals chart. So basically what we do here is we want to draw, for example, something. Normally we would have to use like say chart.ctx. And this is such a long code if you have many different items. So that's too redundant and too complicated. So that's why I'm going to say here now just ctx. And this would basically mean I can now use ctx. And of course, there are so many more because this here is the object of everything within our chart. So if you're wondering what it is, basically this one here with all the drawings in there. So, so we have the CTX, which, force, which allows us to draw now within the canvas. So the next what we need is, besides the CTX, is the skills. And I need here the X and Y values that might be very useful for us because we need to know the X and Y position of the items because basically we want to make sure that's here at the very top so we need to know the position in pixels here later on we're going to do that all right so now we have the most important item let's put a space here there we are and what i want to do now is start to draw something so let's draw something and what i'm going to draw here now is just first of all we're going to ctx and what i'm going to do here is we're going to say here a font ctx at font and then we're going to select a font a style front family of this so for our case i want to make this bold and i'm going to say here this will be 12 pixels make sure that this is a string value and then we say font family is sans serif once i have this i want to say ctx dot and we can give it here we will say fill style for the color so in here we can say here the color what would be the color for now i will just say blue or, well, let's get one of these colors here. Let's grab this. Later on, I'm going to grab that color here, dynamically. Semicolon. And once we did this, uh, we can do here, finally, ctx.fill text. Meaning we're going to draw now the text. And we'll do two things. First of all, we have to put in here the text that we want to show. So what do we want to show? I want to show the sum of these two. So we have to work on that. That's a whole formula separate. So right now, I'll just say here as a text, number 19, comma, and this will be the X and Y position. So for this, we still have to work on, but I'm going to put in here, let's say 100, comma, for the X, and 100 for the Y position. If I save this now, refresh, you can see here now we have something working, and this is apparently 100 by 100. So 100 from this point, this is the corner here, and it goes 100 to the right, and 100 down or at least 100 pixels to the right and down. So what I want to do now is I want to make this specifically the position whatever we are on. So let's start to do that one. So I'm going to use a command here, the X, which is referred to the scale. And then I'm going to say here, dot, and I'm going to say get pixel for value, and then I'm going to put in here a number. In this case, our pixel for value, I would say here would be uh, zero. And the reason why zero we're on the x scale which is number zero one two three four five six so i'm going to put this in here and if i save this now you can see here now it is basically in the center but it doesn't look like it why because we have the text aligned by default set on left meaning all the left side will be ignored and starting at this point so let's convert the text align or text alignment to the center so we say ctx dot text Align with capital A equals center. Save this. Refresh. There we are. So now we have that one. That looks absolutely phenomenal. But of course, we have now only the y for the x position. We still need to have the y position. So for that, we're going to use another command because the y position here will be eventually dynamic because we have this movement here, as you can see here. And right now, you can see here it doesn't move because it's static. So if you would do this, maybe you would say, all right, we just copy this and do this. And then we just say here, number 19, let's save that. Oh, of course, not like that, must be Y. This will be also static. I don't like the staticness, uh, the static effect here. So what, what we want is this dynamic uh, running effect. So let's start to do that one. So I'm going to say here, chart. So this is a built-in command in chart.js. So say chart dot get 
data set meta. And then we're going to say it number for now I'm just putting here number one dot. And then we say here the data because basically this is the meta would be the position. Uh, number one, and then we say data. Then we're going to get here the value index would be zero dot y. So if I save this now, refresh, you can see here now we get the running effect. But of course, as you can see here, this is nice. But look, we have still one more issue, which is we need to push it up a little bit more. All right. So basically, this here calculates the pixel amount. So what we're going to do here is it gets here the value, whatever the value is, but then converts it into a pixel amount. And that's why we have the running effect and it works nicely. So now I'm going to just say plus, oh no, sorry, not plus, but minus 10 pixels, why? Why minus and not plus? If we go plus, we're going down because the top here is zero. Down here is whatever the height would be of this canvas, which we can search here. Let me do this. You can see the height is 350. So if you go more down, it means a higher value would be 350, or this is 350, have right here 100, 175, and up here is zero. So I need to go and reduce the amount, whatever we have here, by minus 10. If I save that, refresh, there we are. All right, so we have this now, and we're very close to it, because what we need to do now is start to loop through this entire item. So what we're going to do here now is, let's see, uh, we have this, but now let's start to loop. And of course, this is hard coded so far. I don't want that. And this one here is also hard coded. And this one can maintain, but that's fine. This doesn't matter so much. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, let's see here. What we have to do here is we're going to enter, enter here. And then I'm going to create here a chart.data.data sets index zero. And then we say here a dot data dot for each. Basically, what I want to do here is I want to loop through what, I, what exactly? What I, want, I want to loop through every individual data point. So we're going to do that one. And I'm going to show you, you might say, well, what, why we do this? Because we will be missing data set number one. Don't worry, I will have another trick for that that will loop through both data sets. But first of all, I need to know how many times we need to loop through. So I have like this here ready. So then in here, what I want is I want to say your data point. So this will be our data point. And the data point and of course our index. All right. So once we did that, we can have here a function error expression because it's a callback functionality here. Then we're going to say constant. And we're going to say here, this will be our data set array. What I really need, so let's say equal this. And make this an array. What I truly need is to loop through all these items here individually and then push them into an array. However, every array is specifically for that data set, those who are matching with the data point here 1 and 19, or 1 and 8, 18, sorry, 2 and 12, 3 and 6, etc. etc. These need to be connected. I don't want them all together like this because we cannot have the sum here. So this is very important. So once I did this, I have this here. Then what I want to do is I'm going to put in here enter. So within this loop, because we have the index here of one from zero to six, and this is very important, we can start to move on. So what I want now is the following. I'm going to say here chart dot data dot data sets and we say dot for each. And what this truly is is the following. I want to have here again, same for for each loop, but this one here is for the data set. So this one was specifically for the seven items or data points. And this one is for each data set. So I'm going to say a data set comma. Uh, well, I don't want to have your index because if I will have index here, I will have a conflict with this because I need this value here. So here we don't need to put in a comma index or else we have one and two, and this will be or sorry, zero and one, and this one will be zero till six, because we have six or seven data points, and we only have two data sets here. So that's why we don't do that, or else we will destroy the precious value of this one here. Anyway, we have this here. What I want to do now is, I want to say here the following. All I need to do here is basically this, we're going to copy this, we're going to say a dot push, 
what I'm going to dot push here in this data set I'm going to say here dot data I'm going to say here uh, we can put in here index all right so once we have that we should have now the numbers pushing them for each of them so this is very important so the index would be basically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 1, 2, 6. But here, because we have two items, it will go then to data set 1, which is basically this here. We'll first get this one in this data set, and then that one. All right. To make sure that this is correct, what I want to do here now is, of course, a console log. Uh, let's see here. We can do the console log maybe even in here. Say so here, console Oh, sorry, I cannot do that in there because we are, have to do it within the loop. Without the loop, it will be in conflict. So, why? Because in the loop, it will individually for that one, or else outside the loop, it will only get the last one because it overrules itself, or overwrites itself. So then, let's save that. Refresh. All right, we see nothing yet. But we get an array here. We get many information here. All right. You can see here, all of these arrays are directly matched seven nine and if i loop over if i hover over it it will trigger it again but that's all right but you can see all the information here eight eighteen plus one twelve plus two which is this one tuesday six plus three uh nine plus four etc etc so this is already a working model so now we're getting very very close to it of course what i want to do next is i need to have the sum of it i don't want to have this array only i want to have the total sum of this so let's start to work on the total sum let's say a sum array and then what I'm going to say here, function, we're going to say here, total sum, which is basically total comma values. And what this really means is that we're going to grab later on this item and every individual value in there is a value. We'll be plusing it or adding it up on each other or summing them together. So we say here, return the total plus values. All right, so this goes in here, and then what I'm going to say here, let sum equal, basically, which array, that's this array, we're going to sum this specific array, and then we're going to say here, dot, uh, or no, dot reduce, that's the command or the method, and the reduce will be used with the total sum functionality. Here, comma, our starting value will be zero. Once we have this, you will see now if I have a console log sum, we should have now the value. Save that, refresh. All right, so we get now all the values here. You can see 19, 14, etc., etc. All these values are showing. So now, of course, let's see here this item. We can cut this all out. We have this all nicely. Put it in here. Give it a proper indentation. All right. And then what I will do is I'll just remove this console log sum. But I'm going to grab this sum here, put it in there, or as a variable. So it's a variable, not a string anymore. Save that, refresh. All right, so now we have them, but you might notice one thing. It is looping on top of each other. So I don't want that. So what I'm going to do here now is we have this. And then, of course, remember, we have this index because we're still within our functionality. And this index is still, for us, very important. So I'm going to copy this. And we're going to just put it in there. And let's save that and refresh. And let's see here. All right, now we get the height accordingly. And then here, you can probably get this one for the index here as well. Refresh, and there we are. So now we have this here, but you might say, hold on, look what happened here. If we are too high, what will happen? So let me show you here. If you put here another two, save that. Refresh. So, oh my goodness, we're going to hit the legends here. And that's I'm very sensitive to that as well, so I would not want to accept that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give this what we call a grace uh, a space, a space of grace period, or a grace. Well, I guess a grace period would be not the right term, but a grace is the term for additional space to consider. So we're going to say here on the y scale, put a comma, we're going to say grace, and the grace amount will be, let's say, uh, let's put in five points, or maybe four points. Save that, refresh. There we are, and now we have some space here. We could even reduce that, depending on what you want. There you are. Apparently, we'll just calculate the brackets here. That's all right. So we have this here. If you might say, well, what about if I want to get the color? So let me show you something. So let's get these colors here. 
that we had in here. We're going to grab these colors here of the border color. We're going to put it in one of our data sets. So we're going to say here, put that all in there. Let's save that, go back here. Now we have all of this, the border color and the background color, I guess. And let's get these border color and put it in here so we have matching colors. All right, so how do we do that? Well, what we have to do here is we have the, here the color. And all I want to do here is now basically the following. I'm going to say a chart. I'm going to say dot data, dot data sets. And maybe we can even, I guess, we could even do, can we do that? No, we cannot get the data here. That's not possible. I thought maybe the data point here, but it's not possible. So we have to be specified individually. And I'm going to say in the data sets, what we're going to do here, in the data sets, then you basically say background color or border color in our case. I'm going to say here, uh, this needs to be specified as index zero. That's the one we want. Border color, and then we can say here index. Save that. Refresh, and now you can see we have all these matching colors here as well with our border. And that's basically how you can play around with this. So that is completely how to do it. So maybe if you only have one item, you need to filter out an item here. And I've skipped that, but because I have a whole video that explains that in here, I would highly recommend you this video here where I use almost the same methodology, except I'm going to use a filtering in here as well. If you understand the filtering, you can apply that as well. Uh, copy that one and put it in here if you would only have a stacked with only a single item. So I highly recommend this one as well if you need that filtering in place.